we've published a couple of papers on thyroid screening at one month of age. We found that about 10 to 15% of these babies do have abnormal thyroid functions, not on the initial screen, but actually by a month of age, it's, it shows up. So a small percentage of these babies do go on thyroid replacement. They usually are on it for about, uh, up to, about until they're three years old, which time they're almost all able to be weaned off by endocrinology. Another thing is we don't use prophylactic hydrocortisone, but there are babies that we will use physiologic hydrocortisone initially stress dose for blood pressure instability that is not related to septic shock, that these are low blood pressure values, and these babies might be on four to seven days of hydrocortisone. Most of them are able to wean off in the first week, but a subsection, again, about 10 to 15 percent, every time you wean off the hydrocortisone, they end up having low blood pressure, start to fall, about, fall, fall apart in terms of the Carter pulmonary status. So in those cases, we leave them on physiologic and let them outgrow it during the hospital stay. Another subset of babies um, have cardiopulmonary failure and they have to be rescued with inhaled NO. We know the multi-center randomized controlled trials showed that inhaled NO did not significantly reduce the incidence of BPD. However, if these babies have pulmonary hypoplasia due to preterm prolonged rupture of membranes and or pulmonary hypertension, Many of them, the only reason they can survive is that NO was used to treat their pulmonary hypertension. And um, usually these are babies that after surfactant, after appropriate lung management, they're still requiring more than 60 to 70 percent oxygen. And often you have echocardiographic evidence of the pulmonary hypertension. They're placed on NO and very soon they often are down to less than 30 percent oxygen. Um, other things that we've been doing. We do do probiotics uh, since 2014. We do do delayed cord clamping now since 2014. In terms of neurodevelopment outcomes, which I'll talk about, we do use aggressive phototherapy. This is from the New England trial in 2008 with the goal of improving neurodevelopment outcomes. And we, with Dr. Mac, Patrick McNamara becoming our division head since the last two years, we now have a targeted neonatal hemodynamic echocardiography service. So we now will look in the first week of life for hemodynamic and significant shunts. And in this population, we don't do prophylactic indomethacin. In the first week, we actually will use acetaminophen for treating a hemodynamic and significant shunt. The second week of life, if the shunt is still an issue and they're not on steroids, they will get into sin. Um, this, I show this because this is an interesting phenomenon. This is, again, a twin. The other twin uh, died soon after birth. Another 22 and once on the week twin. IUGR for 22 weeks during 94 grams. And unfortunately, there's a population of severe IUGR babies that die from hepatoblastoma at about age two to three. So this was uh, sad. She made it home, but uh, died of hepatoblastoma.